Hi there, it's Karen Lebo with VintageDazzle.Etsy.com here with another weekly vlog where I show you the vintage items and craft items that I am listing, that I am selling, and other stuff that's going on in my life. I hope that you'll join me, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I do one or two videos a week, not a whole lot. Um, and um, leave me a comment. If you care to, I enjoy the comments, and I um, like to get to know my viewers. And with that, I'm going to show you the one sale I had today. I do have some listings that I've done, but it's too dark to show them to you. I'll show them to you tomorrow. Uh, this is a, a piece of Turkish embroidery. Uh, a little towel, I think it is. Um, if you watched my haul videos, you will know that I got just a whole ton of these Turkish embroidery pieces from my sister-in-law to sell. They are selling slowly but surely. This one sold for $32. And I also wanted to show you this. <laughs> I just opened this box today from Harlequin Books. Some of you may know that in a previous life I wrote romance novels. And this, um, Germany is one of the main uh, consumers of Harlequin romance novels. They translate them and publish them in different, like these kind of, they're kind of uh, very almost magazine-y type things. But this is pretty cool because this is a trilogy of, of a series that I did about a fire station. And that's me. That's my pseudonym. These are the three books. So, there I still get a few little royalties dribbling in from my old books. I haven't had, the last book I had out was in 2013. So it's been nine years. God, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, so, and this, uh, gosh, that came out in the mid-2000s, I think. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that. <laughs> Hi there, it is Tuesday morning, and I'm going to show you a few things I got listed. I think I got these listed over the weekend. Um, we have two jewelry items. The first is these lovely malachite and black onyx earrings. Uh, I think these are probably around the 1980s. They're studs. They are um, just, uh, oops, they are marked uh, 950 silver, which is nice. It's a little more pure than even sterling standard. Nice condition. And, um, and uh, those are listed for 34. And then this is an Italian sterling silver little link bracelet. I just love how these links are connected. It's a very precise, beautifully made piece. And uh, that listed for 32. And then lastly, we have these adorable little paper mache dolls. We have this little man with this blue sombrero. And then we have these little articulated ladies. Um, so I have learned that the ladies are called Lupina dolls. It's a specific kind of paper mache doll. They, they, there are several names associated with them. Um, these ones came from Guanajuato. I know that because there's only like a couple of places that specialize in making these types of dolls. They were originally, they've been made for like 200 years, and they were originally made as inexpensive toys for children. So, um... They stopped being made about the time that cheap plastic dolls became available, and now there are still just only a few people still making them. Um, and I know these came from Guanajuato because I had some some of my in-law relatives live there for a while, and my sisters in law and my mother in law all visited there, so that's I'm sure that's where these came from. So I listed the three of them together for sixty-five dollars. Aren't they cute? I love them. This one, this one, no, this one has an ouchie on her leg. It's really smushed, but there may be a way to fix that. Maybe if you 
from the inside. You could maybe put a long needle or something, make a little hole on the inside of the leg, and then punch that place out again. This one has a little bit of a crush, but it's not bad. Here it is, Tuesday night, and these are the items that I sold today. This is an Art Deco style bracelet set with tiny little rhinestones, sold to one of my regular buyers for $42. Um, this is a art glass, this blue and white glass, and a little kind of a freeform Mebus strip of sterling silver with a chain. can't remember whether the chain is sterling or not. I think it might be. Anyway, um, that sold for $29. Uh, we have a Nautilus necklace. You can wear it like this with the iridescent blue side up, or you can wear it like this where the chambers are showing. It's on sterling silver. I think it's on a silver plated chain. And that sold for 46 We have these lovely filigree silver and coral dangle earrings that I think are pretty old. Old wire earrings. The, the wires are handmade. Everything's handmade about them. Mm -hmm. Come on, focus. There you go. Yeah, I really like these. Um, let's see. Those sold for 45 and then lastly, we have these enormous kind of door knockery earrings. They have to be 1980s. They are signed, but I couldn't read the mark very well. But they're really cool, kind of modernist looking fun. And uh, those sold for 38 Hi there. It is what muffin? It is Wednesday night. And uh, these are the items that I sold today. Shh. Shh. Um, so this was a lot of pendants that I sold all together. Um, some kind of nice ones. That's a little Avon right there. It's a tiny little charm right there. These are, that's a rhodochrosite heart. This is, I think this is Mother of Pearl. This I'm not sure. I don't think it's really turquoise, but it's a pretty good imitation. What is she complaining about? Um, Mother of Pearl Owl. Really cute. And I sold all those together for a whopping $18. Including shipping. So these were just some odds and ends that I'd been collecting for a while. And so I just sold them as a lot. And then the other piece, this is a really interesting. This, I believe, is, well, it's sterling silver. And I believe that it is by Hopi artisan named Marvin Loma Haftawa. Um, the mark is just the only mark. It's like a little, it's like two little triangles right by the hinge there. Two little triangles with their points touching, almost like a little bow tie. And um, I, the only mark that came close was his mark, and it was pretty close. The one that I saw was not exactly the same, but it was very, very similar. And so then I thought, well, I wonder if it could be him. And I looked up his name and the jewelry that he made. He is deceased now, but the jewelry that he made looked a lot like this. I mean, it was very stylistically very, very similar. So I'm pretty sure that's who made this. And they're pretty rare and um, pretty pricey. The only pieces I saw were like big belt buckles and bracelets. I didn't see any small um, pieces like this pen. Anyway, I uh, priced it at $55 and it sold like <laughs> probably in less than an hour. So um, somebody had, you know, one of those Google search alert things for that artist, I believe. It's always kind of fun when that happens. And then you're always thinking, oh my gosh, did I price it too low? Possibly. But, you know, I, I did get it for free and so one of the pieces that came from my sister-in-law. So, I got a good price for it. Somebody probably got a good price for it. Everybody's happy. Uh, that's all I have today. Hi there. It is Thursday morning. 
and it's going to be a very hot day today. 97 degrees, they're predicting. So I've already made my run to the post office, and now I'm going to show you some things that I got listed yesterday. Okay, jumping into the upholstery fat. Oh, what am I talking about? The textiles again. Uh, we have this tablecloth with the paisley design on it. Such a bright, cheerful color. And 12 napkins that match. Of the 12 napkins, two of them are a little bit discolored. You can kind of see that this one's a little faded on that edge. And... Okay, fire engine going past. Um, but 10 of them are like really mint, really nice. And the tablecloth is in really great shape too. So, listed that tablecloth for $45. And that's free shipping, so and it's heavy. It's pretty good. Um, then we have this um, upholstery fabric, fabric, which is looking very blue. Hold on just a minute. There, I think that color is a little more accurate for you. It's kind of a teal with these little pastel covered, colored um, little tick, tick marks. It's really heavy duty. It's a, it's a remnant, maybe enough for one little chair or some pillows. And that uh, listed for 27. Uh, and these are some Egyptian pillow covers. Oops. Let's see. This and a little guy with a goose. And this one with the god Anubis holding an Ankh. Um, I did actually find several of these. They seem to be a thing. Um, and so I listed those two for 35 And then we have this Saltillo-style Mexican blanket, which I think is a pretty old one because the colors are a bit muted. The, the newer ones have like a lot of hot pink and lime green, really, really bright. And these, while well, they're, they're colorful, but a little more subdued. And, you know, you can see that it's got a little bit of wear. And um, these command really high prices. If you ever run across them, grab them, especially the older ones. Uh, I listed that one for 135 And then... We have these Mexican silver and brass earrings that look like gathered fabric. Very 1980s looking clip-ons. They are signed. Um, let's see, I think maybe, did I figure out who the artist was on these? Um, I think I did, but it was like somebody I couldn't figure, couldn't find out anything about the artist. But anyway, they're nice. And, um... Listed those for 34 And, yeah, the other item was that pin that I showed you that sold. Okay. Okay, so here is Rob, and if you watched my last haul video, I had a book that had belonged to him that I found in Marion's box, and someone suggested that I film his reaction to giving it to him. So, here goes. I'm giving it to him. You know, I was thinking about this book. This was my favorite. Oh my God, I, I spent hours going over this book. It's about, about fishing. Yeah. And, and there's a picture somewhere in here of a little mouse on it with a rubber band around it. Oh, that made me so sad. <laughs> <laughs> that they were using this little mouse as bait. Oh, <laughs> that would make me sad too. Oh, oh my gosh. Huh. Well, I don't know that you can sell this book. <laughs> no, I'm not going to sell that book. We'll keep Let's it. See if I can find a little mouse. <laughs> I, got, I was thinking about this book the other day. Were you really? Yeah. That's weird. That's a stretch because I remember I, I, I was interested in maps. And, and since I was interested in fishing, my brain made the little... You know, <laughs> Maps thing I wondered about that. Yeah. Well, can't find, can't the find the mouse. mouse. All right. Well. Okay. Well, that was fun. Okay. Here's the sad little mouse 
attached to a rubber band that they're using as bait. Aww, that's his set. It is Thursday night. These are the items that I'm shipping off tomorrow. Uh, this one sold on eBay, and this is a Franz Junkersdorf Dresden heraldic plate with a knight on a horse. And this plate has a very interesting history. I did a lot of research on it, and I recounted the history on Etsy, where I originally was trying to sell it, and the Etsy bot came through and deactivated my listing because I used the N-word, not the one that refers to black people, but the one that refers to bad German people during World War II. That N-word. <laughs> I understand uh, YouTube is a little sensitive about it also. Uh, anyway, um, there is an interesting history. As you can see, there was an original mark that was blacked out because it happened to be a Jewish company that made it. So it was, I had three of these plates originally. I got them at a thrift store, I think, for about a buck a piece years ago. And uh, I moved them over to eBay and gradually got them sold. This is the last one. Um, not terribly expensive. $22 was what that sold for, plus shipping, which is a little bit pricey. Uh, let's see, then we have this necklace. This is a um, costume jewelry, but it's very pretty. Very blue sparkly stone with the um, silver tone and gold tone metal. Um, and that's sold for a whopping $17. And then we have some textiles. We have this, and I will slide pictures in to show you. This is some Uzbek decorative tassels that are used to decorate yurts. Um, I was really pleased when I was watching uh, Antiques Roadshow, the uh, UK version, that they went through the whole story that I'm always yakking about, um, how the Uzbek decor had to be soft and portable because they put them in their yurts and they were nomadic people. And she, and, uh, she had a, a big Uzbek textile that she was talking about. She went through that whole story. I was like, yeah! Yeah, I know that story. Uh, anyway, these tassels, very cool. They sold for 75 And then this is a Guatemalan handwoven sweater jacket. And that sold for 35 Here we are, bike riding again on a very, very hot Friday morning. Supposed to get in the 90s today. I don't know what it is right now, but it feels pretty hot already. There is my sweetie. <laughs> strawberries here. That one's kind of a dud. This one, no, I don't think that's quite ready to pick yet. Still got a lot of white on it. Pick the Barbie strawberry. Any others? Got some flowers coming. Hi there. It is Friday afternoon. I really wore myself out between the bike ride and the walk to the post office in 90 plus degree heat. Whew, I came home and just kind of fell apart. <laughs> That's what happens, but now I'm feeling better. Drank a whole bunch of water, and I was going to show you a few things that I got listed yesterday, and then hopefully maybe I'll get some work done today. So first off, we have a lot of three hats. I believe these are from the 1940s. These belong to my husband's grandmother, Nana. Nana. I'm so sorry I never met her. She died not long after Rob and I started dating, and I didn't get a chance to meet her. She sounded like she was such a character. Um, but this is some kind of fur. I'm thinking possibly it's trimmed mink. It is really soft. Um, I don't, it's like, I don't know, maybe it's otter fur or something because it's just really dense and soft. But it's one of those little hats that just kind of perches on the top of your head. It's got little combs that hold it in place. And it's got some tags. Ambrose, New York, 
J.L. Hudson Company, which was a nice department store in Detroit. And then we have this little straw hat, which is kind of a turban. This would be an everyday, bad hair day kind of hat. <laughs> and then this one is lovely. This one is velvet and silk, different colors. It's got this little rhinestone pin. It's also kind of a, a turbanish style, but it's very flat. It just kind of sits on the top of your head. The turban style was very popular in the 30s and 40s. And uh, those three hats I am selling together for $47. And then I also am selling three belts. And this one, a kind viewer, thank you so much, uh, informed me that this was from Bhutan and that it's a belt worn in traditional women's dress. And this makes sense because uh, my sister-in-law, Amelia, did visit Bhutan, so I'm sure that's where this came from originally. Got it from Marion, and she may have gone to Bhutan also. They travel a lot together. Uh, and then this second belt is a little, uh, this is from Guatemala, and it's a little, I think this is what it is, it's a worry doll belt. It's got these little tiny dolls, which are worry dolls in Guatemala. They uh, give them to children, and the idea is that the child tells whatever its problems are to the worry doll, and then they sleep with it under their pillow, and then by morning they wake up refreshed and untroubled by whatever their problem was. So that was another belt. And then the third belt was this, um, this one Mexican belt made with these painted panels. Very cute. They're all really cute belts. And, um, sold those three belts for $39. I mean, I listed them, didn't sell them yet. And then we have some jewelry. This is Mexican silver stud earrings with a black enamel X. Um, these are signed, but I wasn't able to identify. They're, um, did I say 1980s, probably. Those are listed for 34. They're heavy, a lot of silver in those. And then these are really cool. These are dangled. These would look so nice with one of those um, ball bead necklaces. And um, the green stone, I believe, is serpentine. I'm not positive, but I think it is. And these are signed Malima. I believe they date from the 1930s or 1940s. Pre-Eagle Mark, I think. Uh, I, don't, I couldn't find out much about Malima, so I don't know but I listed those for 34 also. It is Friday night and these are the sales I made today. Uh, let's start with this one. This is a an ECAT woven scarf in a kind of a maroon color and I'll slide in a picture so you can see it. And uh, that sold for 28. Then we have this pretty little thing. This is a Coro Pegasus Coro brooch with Aurora Borealis rhinestones. Uh, I don't think this video is doing it justice. It's really pretty. Um, that sold for $22. Then we have some Mexican silver. This is really fun. I love this image. It's so funny. Some guy getting his head eaten by something. Uh, very Aztec looking brooch pendant. So it's one of my very best customers. I don't know that he watches my YouTube videos, but if you do, thank you very much. You know who you are. That sold for uh, 47 And then this pretty little thing. This is... Sorry, it's so bright. I don't know why my picture's so bright today, but this is a lovely little Guatemalan silver brooch of a Quetzal bird with a long tail really pretty. And he sold for $32. Hi there, it is Saturday morning. Just got done doing a little, just a little bit of gardening. I'm really behind on that. Um, but I wanted to show you some things that I got listed yesterday. Um, first up are these adorable little shoes. I do believe these are from Laos, but they're at least somewhere in Asia. Um, hand-woven grass or straw with this little design. They're actually 
kind of cushiony on the inside. These these are meant to be worn, but um, they also sell them in markets and people buy them as souvenirs, which is I think what this is. They're little child shoes. They're so cute and they're mint condition, never worn. They're still attached to each other. And listed those for twenty five. Couldn't couldn't really find many comparables out there. Uh, and then we have a a bag of old oops old kitchen utensils. If I can show you, we have a wooden potato masher. This is a nice old primitive. Then we have a spoon. That's an Echo spoon with a Bakelite handle. Uh, we have these measuring spoons, which I have a set identical to this, and I love them. And then my mother, the reason I have them is because my mother had some just like these also. They must have made these for a long time and a million years ago. I believe that they're tin. Um, and then the last thing is, if I can get it out, this little grater, which is steel. For, um, I guess it's like for nutmeg and garlic and, you know, little things. Um, so, let's see, I listed all of those kitchen utensils for 28 for the lot. Been kind of, every time I get a kitchen thing, I put it to the side, and when I get enough to sell, I sell them. Uh, we have these wonderful old Mexican silver earrings with the carved green onyx faces. They're screwbacks. They are signed. Uh, yeah, these, these ones are signed JGG, which I couldn't find. It's got to be an old maker, but I couldn't find anything out about JGG. But these are old. Uh, 1930s, 1940s. Probably. Listed those for 34 And then... We have these Mexican silver earrings, little wiggly ribbon things, and these are signed also, um, TT25, could not find out who that was, but they're just cute, and uh, those listed for 25 Hi there, it is Sunday evening. I have somehow managed to sell only one thing over this entire weekend. It's so weird, like last weekend I sold like eight things and this weekend I sold one thing. It's very strange. It comes in, it comes in waves. But anyway, I'll show you that one thing and then that'll be it for this vlog. And uh, this is my one sale. It is a Sheffield silver plate butter dish, Victorian I think. Um, pretty neat old piece. And that sold for $20 plus shipping. It's something I've had for sale for quite a while. Everything I do these days is free shipping, but uh, some of my older listings are still plus shipping if they're in the lower price range. Okay, so that is it. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And... Uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you like, what you don't like, and share with your friends, and that is it. I will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Rob says bye. Muffin says bye, too, only she's too shy. She has to hide under my desk. <laughs>